I'm at Edgelitz talking to Jonathan Butcher, author of uh, What Good Girls Do and the new release What Good Men Do. Uh, Jonathan, how have you been enjoying Edgelit? Loving it. Yeah. Um, it's the second time that I've been here. Um, it just feels nice to be part of a, a group of authors that I'm slowly getting to know a little bit better. Um, it's a really nice space and I recommend any authors who you know have been tempted to pop along to it to come along. To, it's got a very different feel to like a convention which is generally for fans. It feels really like it's as much for authors as mm. it is for, for readers. Um, yeah, it's been great. Uh, so I'm going to ask you because <clears throat> a lot of people will know you for what good girls do um, and this is a book that I've tried to describe to someone recently and they interrupted me halfway through me trying to describe the premise and said I don't want to hear anymore so how would you describe the premise of of, of these books <laughs> <laughs> really? um, maybe splatterpunk with a conscience right um, I've I've been very careful to avoid being exploitative um, in the writing. I wrote these books because the subject matter um, distresses me to a mm. great deal. I've known a lot of people who have been harmed, sometimes in similar ways to this. Um, so, I mean, I would just, if they don't want to read it, then, then that's absolutely fine. So I would just describe it as uh, someone who has never known the outside world and has only known suffering experiences the outdoors for the first time. Yeah, that's the premise of the first book and it all goes horribly, horribly wrong for me. I mean, as it, as it probably would do right, when, yeah. you've been, when you've been raised in such extreme conditions. Um, and, you know, in, in a lot of ways I wrote it to reflect the mindset of people who, who have probably experienced suffering in different ways. Mm. It, you know, when you've, when you've been mistreated from such an early age, it moulds the personality um, to a to a great deal and in, in some cases people sadly never recover or, mm. or it's a lifetime of recovery <clears throat> um, so initially I, I wrote it as sort of a way to unleash a bit of psychic vengeance on the people I detest so much for mm. doing such things but I think that as I was writing it it became a more interesting premise and maybe an exploration of the victim mentality mm. as, as well as what can cause it Right, the, uh, the sequel, What Good Men Do, is out now. Did you, when you finished writing What Good Girls Do, did you always have it in your head that you were going to have a sequel? A absolutely not, no. I, when I wrote the book, What Good Girls Do, I thought it was too extreme to be published. Um, I wasn't aware of extreme horror at that point. I'd never read Jack Ketchum, Edward Lee, and any of the, the contemporary masters of the genre. So I just thought, uh, you know, no, no one's going to want to publish this. And it wasn't a fun thing. It was satisfying. Um, but when you're writing about such extreme subject matter and not trying to be lurid about it and make it funny or fun or over the top, um, it's not a fun world to, to explore and I thought I'll, I'll never revisit this mm -hmm. unless I have an idea so good that I can't not write it. Mm -hmm. And one evening out of the blue that happened. Mm. Um, I was hanging out with friends online and then boom, I had this idea and within an hour, I had basically the entire narrative arc sketched out. Um, and I was actually in the middle of um, a master's degree. Um, and it was such a compelling idea that I gave myself that additional workload on top of my master's wow. and wrote an entire novel in the middle of it. Uh -huh. So it really wasn't a, yeah, a, 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 an intention to do that at all, yeah. but it felt like something that I had to do. Mm -hmm. um, Without giving too much away, and I think it's better that we sort of skirt around the subject matter as much as possible, but the first book has two viewpoints. They're both victims, essentially. The second book has uh, some other viewpoints thrown in there, people who are not necessarily victims. I mean, what's the experience like for you of, of, of writing that kind of stuff? Um, well, I guess even though they aren't your typical victims in the same way as um, Serenity and Elizabeth are, both of them have been mistreated mm. and their lives shaped by bad things that they have suffered. Um, it's a very different book to the first. Uh, the first one is highly extreme from page one, and I guess you could say that about the, the second one, but 
it's not as relentless mm. as the first and it was never my intention to write something that extreme it just happened mm -hmm. so um, it was an interesting experience expanding on the world um, it required some really unpleasant research into the dark web and crimes that have been committed in relation to that because you know that's what Elizabeth has been the subject of mm -hmm. Um, and the other two viewpoints are once again extremely different to the other two um, but people seem to be enjoying if that is the right word um, getting inside the heads of two other people from that same universe mm -hmm. it's interesting you talk about enjoying the book because reading them re reading them both it's I think it's incredibly compelling but I don't know if I have the right words to describe what the experience of of reading them is is like it's not really enjoyment is it what do you think what do you think is the value of uh, of of producing and and reading literature like this? Um, well, let me start by saying something that I heard just the other day, which I found really interesting. And I actually think that um, what good girls do and what good men do are actually more transgressive than they are extreme or splatterpunk. Right. If there is a distinction, because someone said. Um, what's the difference between splatterpunk and transgressive? And someone said, transgressive doesn't care if you're having a good time. Right. And I think that's the case. I didn't, I didn't write it to be enjoyable. I wrote it to purge some real anger. And I've had people get in touch with me and say that it did, it did similar things to them. People who have experienced suffering from an early age saying that there is something um, released by, by reading such literature. And especially when it's arguably coming from like a feminist or, you know, a, a more em empathetic viewpoint for, mm -hmm. for, for victims rather than just reveling in the grotesqueries. Mm. So I guess, yeah, um, a release mm -hmm. perhaps. And also raising some issues that I think are quite important as well. It's interesting. Well, I definitely recommend them to uh, people who are strong enough to take it. For anyone who's it's not really their kind of bag. You do write other stuff, though. What else would you <laughs> would you suggest to someone who's perhaps isn't really interested in that that, that type of subject matter? I mean, I uh, most of my horror stuff definitely has an extreme edge, mm. so I would say probably stay away from that. <laughs> However, um, I my masters was in crime and thriller writing, and as a part of that, um, I had to write uh, a full plan and the first twenty thousand words of a crime uh, a crime thriller and it is going to be written sometime I'm, I'm expecting in the next year or so. It's called The Path Reader, um, and it is about a psychic escort um, who essentially reads people's fortunes while he is servicing them sexually, because whenever he is intimate with someone, he is able to read into their past and future. And when he reads the path of um, a client who wants to know where he has been for the last few days after vanishing he is forced to involve himself in the mystery solving it and trying to keep himself safe during the journey right so it's a speculative mystery thriller that is less extreme than anything else i've ever written <laughs> and far more yeah safe for consumption that's the path reader the path reader yes excellent okay well look out for that and in the meantime there's what good girls do and the new released what good men do. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank you, John.